<laughs> Morbius. So, Morbius. Yeah, Morbius is coming out in less than a week. I will be seeing it on Thursday. And like I said earlier, I'll be doing an out of theater reaction and a review on the channel of this movie that I'm very intrigued in seeing and what is going. But people have been seeing it. They've had early fan uh, screenings and whatnot. And we're going to show a couple of them uh, from the, I believe, uh, from a, a Twitter feed. I'm going to show you in a second. But there is one, Andrew, where they do all these fan screens and they say, hey, please, please tweet positive reactions to this film hmm. that's what they said they asked people to tweet positively because it's a fan event they want you to be positive and i get it i went to see the justice league the joss whedon justice league at a fan event and i will tell you it was a very pleasant experience you have a great time they treat you well you get fed you get a drink you get it like it's very well and so they asked the people to say that and somebody said they asked me to tweet something positive so i'll say the free wine was good wow that was the tweet that they wow, man. And I can, I can tell you, when you go to a fan event, they treat you very well. And it's, ve it's very easy to like a bad movie at these events because they, they, they treat you so well. They spoil you. They pamper you. And you're like, oh, man, I'm in this environment. This is the best. Like, and it, they trick you into whatever you're seeing to thinking that it's the best thing ever. And this person, I can't remember who it was, was on Twitter and said, the free wine was good. That it was, was a Aaron, wasn't it? <laughs> who was it? It was, it was Aaron. Leto. It was Aaron. Yeah, right. Aaron. She might have had other things to say about the wine, but that's <laughs> what I. That's what I saw. I saw some other stuff where people just talking bad about it, and it's unfortunate that this is it. But we're gonna throw up some of the <laughs> reviews right now to take a look at them. Um. So yeah, we'll give these a read. So here, this is from the MCU report over on Twitter. They put this together. Look, they they probably put more time and effort making this graphic here than the people made making Morbius. Oh, boy. So Morbius reactions. Uh, MCU report. Follow them. Uh, Morbius is about as bad as you were expecting. A 2005 plot collides with visually confusing CGI to create a bit of a snooze fest. But don't worry. They've saved the worst for last, featuring some of the worst post-credit scenes you've ever seen. Sony are off their rocker from Saul oh, Sar yeah. Astley. All right, let's yeah. take turns reading these. I want to do that next one. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that you're like, I this want to say You can read them all if you want. I don't care. <laughs> Morbius is just as disjointed and boring as you expected it to be. Clearly butchered in an edit by a studio who had no clue what they wanted to do with it. Not that there is a good film trapped in there. Okay. So as boring as we expected, like, I think that's like what we said earlier, like this is Netflix levels of bland and they, that's not a surprise. I don't, I don't want to expect it to be boring. That's what says something about all of the, the promotional material for it though. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. <laughs> Uh, Morbius is unfortunately not great and definitely not as fun as Venom. Really confused at the future of the Sony Spider-Verse following the post credit scenes and the editing. Wow. Uh, yeah, uh, Nicolo Oz says that. That's um, Again, it's, I liked Venom. I know people had problems with it, but I think it was a fine film. I don't think it was over the top or anything. I think it was fine. Mm -hmm. um, and not as fun as Venom. Venom was like one of the least fun movies that they've made. <laughs> There are fun moments, but it's not as fun as a lot of the other ones. And man, I don't. If you're gonna go that dreary, again, this comes back to what I said earlier, where maybe you know, make this movie because somebody wanted to make this movie, not because a studio said money. Right, and that's the problem. I see, I I find Venom, the Venom that they gave us there, that Tom Hardy gave us. I find him really charming and fun. Like as soon as he shows up, the movie gets exciting to me, and I have a good yeah. time. Uh, and this guy, Dr. Michael Morbius, seems like he is not uh, that kind of character. He seems much more dry. Uh, let's see. Morbius proves that no matter how many famous faces or shiny visuals you squeeze in, Sony will always find a way to impressively misunderstand basic storytelling. Oof. That is harsh at Escape Film Club. That's very hard. I don't know if that's mm -hmm. warranted. <clears throat> well, I mean, I can't say I haven't seen it, so I guess we're going to. This is hilarious, though. These, um, The bad plotting and messy CGI. That's the second CGI reference. They've had two years to get it right. <laughs> Confusing editing. Again, the editing and worst sound mix result in absolute incoherence. But the post-credits managed to outdo it all. 
us den of geekness right there. Yeah, I, I, so all these things are on like the same page. That's what's hilarious about it. Is it's like they recognize there's an editing problem and a CGI problem and a storytelling problem. But the edit here's the thing: the CGI. I don't understand how you don't spend two years to get that right. The other mm-hmm. thing though is the editing. The editing. I'm curious if that is how it was originally, or if it was because they shoehorned in. The, the multiverse, because apparently the, the post credit scene, Andrew, if you don't want it spoiled, I don't really care this point. I actually would love to know it. I don't care about this. Okay. I, did, I did a video on it a little while ago, but apparently there's, post, there's two post credit scenes now. And for, this is all speculation at this point in time, but nobody has refuted it. Okay? It's mm-hmm. out there. No one said that's not true. <clears throat> apparently, uh, Tombs, Vulture, the purple sky from from uh, No Way Home opens up and transports him to a prison cell in the Morbius universe. Okay? Uh-huh. All right. Uh, I, I don't have it in front of me. Uh, so, And then the second post credit scene. Oh, and then, then he's, so he's in the cell and then the cops are like, who are you? You didn't arrest you because he's in a different universe, so they let him go. Then the second post credit scene is the vulture in his flying gear, don't ask how he got it, uh, and Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Morbius is driving a car towards the desert, and Vulture flies next to him and says, hey, I want to get revenge on Spider-Man. I'm putting together a team. You in? And oh, Morbius Lord. says, and Morbius says, yes. And I'm like, okay, here's the thing. Makes no sense. They don't even know how the multiverse works, apparently. But the thing that makes this, for me, to sound makes this seem true, Andrew, is in the most recent featurette for this disaster of a movie, Jared Leto said the multiverse has opened the door to possibilities. So they're acknowledging the multiverse, which was supposed to happen after this movie came out. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of thinking the problem with this movie is they made the movie like this, And then years went by and they're like, Madam Web, Venom, Craven, our universe. So then they made changes there. Then the multiverse was a thing. And they're like, well, we can explain it all with the multiverse. But so then they're like, don't put Spider-Man in this because he's the our Morbius one. And we'll have Morbius in Madam Web. And Madam Web will have Spider-Man. And I think all of that has butchered this film, which probably wasn't good to begin with. Let's just be honest. It probably was a mediocre film to begin with. They ended up butchering it with all these last minute decisions that they've made because they had two years. You can't sit on a film for two years. And instead of working on the CG, they just butchered it, put the pieces where they needed them to fit into their agenda. And and now they're making Jared Leto do his best acting to date by pretending he likes this movie. Although he just did a Vanity Fair article where he had a scapegoat where he's like, if the movie fails, it's because it was on the shelf for two years. So he's already preparing for the failure. But like, I I don't know. That's where I'm at right now with this movie is all the problems are stemming, stemming from the delays causing Sony to do what they do best. They did it to Spider-Man 3 and they did it to Amazing Spider-Man 2 where they're like, let's put that cart before the horse. Oh, boy. Um, it's like I'm, I don't like being the kind of guy who judges a movie before he sees it, so I'm going to do my best to not be that person. But you're right. If you take away the multiverse of it all, Morbius is a movie with zero identity and a movie with zero reason to exist. It's, it just feels like this mediocre movie about a mediocre character. Let's face it. I don't think anybody I know would say their favorite Spider-Man villain is Morbius. Um, and oh. it's, it's just existing here to try to tie in with something. And maybe on day one, that was just Venom. And maybe on day 50... That was, I don't know, a possible Craven movie, and maybe now on day seven hundred and eighty-four, it's the multi- whatever. Um, but it just feels like um, at you're sticking a post-it note on a painting and saying this is part of the painting too, uh, but it's just a post-it note. There's no art to be found there, um, and I get a sense that everybody knows that going into it even it seems like 
Jared Leto and some of these people who are who are part of the the making of it all seem to know that going into it. But all that aside, what boggles my mind is this. After No Way Home, which these people clearly saw because they're <laughs> throwing it in, but after No Way Home, why do we need a Sinister Six movie, James? Well, because Sony, why do we need Sony needs their Avengers, and they don't have the heroes; they have the villains. That's why. I look. I think I don't. I'm going to argue. I'll argue that I think a Sinister Six movie would be cool. The problem is you don't have a Spider Man. <laughs> Exactly. That's the problem. Why you is he ever... saying yes to revenge unless Spider Man's in this movie? Like Morb if Morbius, if that Spider Man murderer sign is gone and Spider Man doesn't exist in Morbius at all, then when Vulture comes and says, "Hey, I need revenge on Spider Man," Morbius should be like, "Who the hell are you talking about? Who is Spider Man?" Like he doesn't know who Spider Man is. So I don't. That uh, I hope that's these what... scenes are fake. I hope this is not real. So do I, but I think they are because everything's like if you look at the what we just showed from MCU Direct, if you look at that, and then you look at what I just read you, they they they, they, they almost feel like they're married. Those two, like it's and no one's disputing anything. That's what Jeremy, we'll, we'll find out. Hi, Desi, we're gonna find Hi, out. Desi. We're gonna find out eventually. I just think this this movie. I, I'm gonna go see it though. I'm gonna go see it on Thursday. And uh, I'm I'm hoping for the best, but I, yeah. Again, though, it's like I mean, I love the Amazing Spider-Man movies. I know you don't, but I love those movies. But again, it's like they're like Sinister Six is happening. Your obsession with the Sinister Six needs to just fade away. But at least then they had Spider-Man. But it needs to fade away. You need to just let it go. I think you can get you could do it now, but you need Spider-Man. They need to figure out Spider-Man in the Sony verse. You get Spider-Man, then you can do a Sinister Six. And I'm okay with them doing Venom, Morbius, Craven, and all, and giving us these movies if there's a reason for them, if they're good stories and character development and all that. But if you want to bring them together, they need a reason to come together. It can't just be like, hey, you know what worked in Iron Man? Nick Fury <laughs> showing up. Sure, it worked. But he, he wasn't like specific. He's like, putting together a team so we could take out Thanos. Like, it wasn't like that. It was like, <laughs> I'm putting together a team. End of story. Let's move on. It's, uh, anyway, that's my thought. I'm look again. I'm not gonna hate watch this. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna see. It. I'm no. gonna hope for the best. I'm really hoping I enjoy it. I heard Matt Smith chews up the scenery and looks like he's having a lot of fun. <laughs> From the sounds of it, he's the only one though. <laughs> he was like, "My paycheck's massive. Let's do this." Uh, anyway, those are the thoughts on Morbius. Anything you want to add to that, Andrew? Before I put this baby to bed, just that I agree with you. I'm gonna go in with a big smile on my face and try to have the best possible time I can have. And for anybody out there who's a fellow fan of the 90s cartoon, yes. uh, I am going to, when the lights go down before the trailers start, I'm going to yell out, Felicia! <laughs>